Welcome to the Tile Roofing Industry Alliance presentation of high wind examples at 140 mile per hour. We're going to be using the new rules of ASCE 7-16 in the 6th edition Florida High Wind Insulation Manual. Hi, I'm Paul Lexak, Technical Trainer at Boral Roofing, and I'll be showing you six examples of roofs in 140 mile an hour wind zone with the new building code. Attached is the ASCE 7-16 wind map for exposure C found on page 32 of the FRSA TRI 6th edition manual. You'll see that the wind zone is in the panhandle and then pretty much covers the central Florida area. Some of the counties are included on the right there. The big difference between the old manual and the new 6th edition FRSA TRI high wind manual is different types of roofs or roof style. The old manual had one style roof. The new manual separates the tables into hip roofs and gable roofs. Also, Another difference with the ASCE 7-16 are the individual roof zones located on a hip and gable roof. In ASCE 7-10, there were three zones for all roofs. In the ASCE 7-16, the new sixth edition of the manual, there are six different zones for gable roofs and four different zones for hip roofs. Let's look at the roof zones for ASCE 7-16. In figure one, hip roof, you'll see four different zones. Zone one, zone two E, zone two R, and zone three. In figure two, gable roofs, you'll see six distinct zones. In the manual, they have divided these zones into either a low pressure zone or a high pressure zone. In a hip roof, figure one, the low pressure zones are everything on that roof other than zone three. The high pressure zone is zone three, just the corners. On a gable roof, the high pressure zones are 3E and 3R, and the low pressure zones are 1, 2E, 2R, and 2N. When looking at the whole roof and the roof zones, there's two options. The first option is the single fastening method, which is you use one fastening method for the entire roof that meets or exceeds both the high and low pressure zones. The other method is the two fastening method, where you use one method of fastening for the high pressure zones while using another method of fastening for the low pressure zones. To do this, you need to calculate the size of the high pressure zone, which is the in the formula for A. Uh, that is covered in another class, but it has to be calculated for you to use the two fastening method. Using the Florida 6th edition high wind manual, let's look at some tables and how they're going to be used to configure our six examples in this wind zone. Table three, mechanical fastening methods, is found on page 31 of the sixth edition. It lists the various attachment uh, methods and also the mechanical fastening resistant values in foot pounds over plywood for the low, medium, and high profile tile. It's actually the aerodynamic uplift moments recorded in testing, and you'll need these values to meet or exceed your design uplift moments which are found on other tables. Before proceeding, I'd like to spend a minute on foam attachment methods. The foam attachment methods may be an alternative to mechanical fastening. These listings are not in the FRSA TRI 6th edition, but rather in the foam manufacturer's product approval. 
you'll have to look at their patty sizes, their placement, and their uplift resistance and compare those to your design pressures using that full manufacturer's product approval. There are now six wind uplift tables, three for hip roofs, three for gable roofs. The hip roofs and the gable roofs are broken down by exposure. So exposure B, hip roof, is in table 2HB. Exposure B, gable roof, is in table 2GB. Likewise, in exposure C, in a hip roof, you have two, table 2HC. In gable roof, you have two, table 2GC. And it follows in exposure D, table 2HD in table two GD. Let's look at the components to determine our fastening. Is it a hip roof, a gable roof, or a combination of hip and gables? What exposure are you in, B, C, or D? Exposure definitions can be found on page 50 of the FRSA TRI guide. What's your roof pitch? There are now three distinctive roof pitch groups. We'll go over those in another slide. What wind speed are you in? Always check with your local building department to ensure that your wind speed is their wind speed. What are your low pressure zones and what are your high pressure zones? What's your mean roof height? Anywhere from zero to 15 feet up to and including 60 foot. Above 60 foot, you'll have to do some engineering. What's your tile profile? Are you a flat tile, low, a low profile, a medium profile, or a high profile? What is your manufacturer's tile ratio? That's based on the size of the tile. And lastly, how are you going to fasten it? Nails, screws, or are you going to use foam? Here are what the table twos look like. Here's two examples. On page 26, you'll find table 2HC, which is for roofs that are hip roofs in exposure C. Table 2GC is the gable roofs in exposure C. Now we'll look at our six examples at 140 mile per hour wind zones. For our examples, we'll make sure they're all exposure C, and we're going to use the same tile ratio, which is a high ratio of 1.10. We're going to do three hip roofs at the three different slopes on the tables, and those are less than 4.5 and 12, 4.5 and 12 to less than 612, and then 612 to 1212. And we'll also do the same slopes for the three gable roofs we're looking at. There are three steps to determine fastening. Step one is to find your uplift moment table. And you'll need to know if it's a hip or gable roof and you'll also need the exposure B, C, or D. Second step is to find the design uplift moment both for the low pressure zone and the high pressure zone. For that, you'll need wind speed, slope, mean roof height, and a new thing called tile ratio, which is an adjustment to the table to the actual dimensions of the tile you are using on your specific project. In essence, it's a correct correction factor. Step three is find your fastening in table three. You'll need to find a resistance greater than or equal to the design uplift moment you found in step two. Example one, 140 mile per hour wind, hip roof, exposure C, less than four and a half on 12 slope, 30 foot mean roof height, all profile tiles and a tile ratio of 1.10. Step one is find your table. On page 26, we found table 2HC. Table 2HC for hip exposure C. For example one, we enlarged our table for easier reading. We go to step two, find our uplift moment. We go to 140 mile an hour wind. We go to less than four and a half, 12 slope. 
we go to 30 foot mean roof height and we get our required aerodynamic uplift moment of 25.4 for both the LPZ and the HPZ zones. We take our table we found in step two, part one, and go to step two, part two, which is factoring, factoring in the tile ratio. So we take our values from table two, eight C, and we at 25.4, we factor in the tile ratio of 1.1 and come up with a new aerodynamic uplift moment of 27.9. So now we go to step three, finding our fastening, and we have our uplift moment of 27.9, and we go to table three, and we look at the low profile tiles and find that those circled methods, fastening methods, can be used for flat tile. Under medium or double roll tile, we find that those fastening methods can be used. And in the high profile tile, uh, those are the methods. As you can see, by profile, different methods uh, will meet that uplift moment of 27.9. Example two, 140 mile an hour hip roof exposure C, four and a half, 12 to less than 612 slope at a mean roof height to 30 foot. We'll look at all profile tiles with a tile ratio of 1.10. We find in table 28C, our LPZ and HPZ remain the same of 21.2. We then go over and factor in our tile ratio of 1.1 and get a new required aerodynamic uplift moment of 23.3. We take a look at table three and we see that flat tile or low profile tile gives us all those uh, methods that we can use. Uh, same with medium profile and same with high profile. So uh, all methods can be used at this roof slope and this roof mean roof height at 140 miles an hour. Okay, in example three, we're gonna go to a steep roof, 612 to 1212. We're gonna stay at 30 foot mean roof height and we'll look at medium profile tiles. So on table 28C, we get our LPZ and HPZ values, which are different, and we factor in the tile ratio. We take the LPZ number, which is the field area, which is all areas other than the uh, HPZ zones, the corners, and we go to the medium profile uh, column, which has those approved methods for direct deck and those approved methods for battens. When you look at the HPZ, you'll see that those methods will work for medium profile tiles. If you look under direct deck, you'll see a number one eight uh, screw can be used in an LPZ, but you would need to use two screws in the HPZ. So that would be a double faceting method example. In example four, we'll switch the gable roofs. Stay on exposure C, but we'll go down to a less than four and a half, 12 slope with a 30 foot mean roof height. Our new table is now table 2GC, gable exposure C. We'll find that at 30 foot mean roof height, our LPZ and HPZs are different. We'll adjust those to the new uplift moments that take in the tile ratio. And we'll start by looking at the LPZ, the low pressure zones, and we'll find out for on table three that the low pressure zones can use those fastening methods. The medium profile can use those fastening methods and the high profile can use those fastening methods. When we go to the HPZ or in the case of gables, the bottom of the gable and the top of the gable, we'll find those fastening patterns will work in the HPZ take a look at the medium profile, you can see that one screw is good only in the LPZ. It is not uh, okay to use in the HPZ. Moving on to example five, we'll move up in slope to four and a half, 12 to less than 612. 
stay at 30 foot mean roof height. Go to our table 2GC and get our LPZ and HPZ uplift moments. Factor in the tile ratio. And then first look at the LPZ. Go over to table three and find those three um, profiles can have those faceting patterns. When you look at the HPZ, uh, the corners and the tops of the gables, you'll find that those faceting patterns will work in the HPZ. So there are a few differences. Now example six, gable roof, 612 to 1212, mean roof height of 30 foot or less. We go to our table two, GC, go to the 612 to 1212 portion and find at 30 foot, those are our LPZ and HPZ uplift moments. Factor in the tile ratio and get new uplift moments. Take a look at the low pressure zone first and you'll find that in table three, the all fastening patterns will work for the low pressure zone. A little bit different in the high pressure zones, the corners and the tops, you'll see over on table three on direct deck, those faceting patterns will work and under battens, those faceting patterns will work. So that's example six. I'd like to thank you for attending the 140 mile per hour wind zone presentation. For more information, go to www.tileroofing.org. Thank you.